What's up, comic fam, comic fans? It is new comic book day haul time, so I'm gonna give you, show you what I got this week, give you some little reviews, and then uh, we're gonna go enjoy the rest of the day, okay? So, we're gonna get into it right after this. So welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We're gonna get into the books, but first don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, go ahead and throw me a thumbs up. And if you want to talk about something, drop a comment down below. Let's get into the books for this week. All right, we're gonna start off with DC. It's the one and only book I picked up from DC. This is Justice League number 65. Origin story of Damon Rose in here. And then you got uh, Ram V doing the Justice League Dark backup story. I am still not caught up on Justice League. So hopefully by the next time the next issue comes out, I will be caught up and give you a full and complete, you know, thoughts on the series. But so far, the few issues I've read, I've liked it. All right. Bendis is not doing a bad job. Next up from Star Wars, we have War of the Bounty Hunter, Jabba the Hutt number one. This is a tie-in, and you got uh, Deva, I think it's Deva Lumpop, could be Diva, but it's, I think it's Deva Lumpop, she's right here. First appearance in the book, she, on well, the Star Wars universe, she's another assassin, she owes a lot of debt to Jabba the Hutt, and um... There's like a backstory and a present day story, but one of the first team ups that Jabba has is with her. We won't get too much into the story. I'll let you read all about her if you pick up this book. I think this is only a one shot. It was good. It's just a lot of setup. They're introducing a new character to the universe, so there's not a ton of action in here, but you get to know a lot about her in this book. So if you have any interest in finding out about the new assassin, in the Star Wars universe, Viva Lumpop, go ahead and give this book a read. And it's Star Wars, and it's a new character. I mean, if you're a speculator, you probably should grab that. And either if you're not, because that book will probably disappear eventually, especially if she ends up being something big in the universe later on. All right, next up, we got another new book this week. We got Moon Knight, number one. There's another first appearance in here. I think it's like Dr. Bar, Bahar. Um, so a new character But this is the new uh, Moon Knight series. I tried to get the uh, Delato uh, Cover of this which is actually pretty cool. It's like black and white with some red on it well, where there was blood Couldn't get it, but this is the Steve McNiven cover cover a it's a nice cover too um, Again another setup book a lot of setup in here. It's issue one. We're introduced to a lot of characters not a whole lot going on in here. We do see uh, Moon Knight, Mark Spector, undergoing some psychological treatment, you know, because he's always been a little little on the edge, a little crazy, paid for by the Avengers. And uh, that's really it. You know, it just goes through what he's doing these days, protecting people at night, you know, people trying to travel at night. So Moon Knight, you know, goes through the whole, he's the fist of Kanshu and all that stuff. Good book, good book, um, but not great. Uh, so yeah, it's an interesting first read. I don't wanna say it's awesome. I don't want you guys jumping out there and be like, it's awesome. But if you have any interest in Moon Knight, go ahead and pick up that book. All right, next up we have Marauders number 22. This is the first of two Jerry Dugan books I picked up this week. Really good book. Kind of gives you the, another origin story of how the uh, Hellfire Club became exclusively a mutant-owned club. They are still, you know, um, after the Hellfire Gala, they're still putting the pieces back together. It seems to be a thing that happens a lot during or after Hellfire Galas. And uh, yeah, all the pieces are, are in play. Again, the White Queen has a lot to do with it. It's a good book, a little bit changes a little bit of the origin of how the Hellfire Club came to be and a, a lot of it is um, you know what role Sebastian Shaw played in that too so it's a good book I recommend it just 
It's very well written. And the art in there is pretty good, too. All right, next up, we got Savage. And for me, this is the best Avengers book out there. Savage Avengers, number 22, Jerry Dugan again. Here you have Ghost Rider riding a giant spider. So that alone is worth the cover. Turns out Nightmare is in here uh, in this book. So he's transported. Or not transported. Conan basically is asleep and Nightmare puts him back into Sumerian times or Sumeria back in the day. And then he, he uh, runs into a ghost rider from that age. And they continue battling a little bit in the Nightmare Realm. But then uh, it's Nightmare just is basically giving a warning to Conan and Ghost Rider that, um, you know, bad stuff is happening. And that Conan may be the only guy who can, you know, save them from all that bad stuff happening. All right. And uh, Gulen Goth, Gulen Goth, Gulen Goth, Gulen Goth, Gulen Goth, Kulan Goth, excuse me, is the uh, the main baddie that Conan needs to take out. Okay, we're gonna switch up to the Indies. We got Radiant Black number six, and this issue is not about Radiant Black; it's about Radiant Red. Now I haven't read it, but I read the previews for it, and it's you know whole new character. I'm guessing Radiant Red is a bad guy. But this is the origin origin story of Radiant Red, so we get to see where he came from in this book. It does have a co-writer in there, so Kyle Higgins co-wrote that, and there's some art by a couple different artists in there. Should be a good read once I get to it. But next up, we have Undiscovered Country number 14. We have the introdu introduction of some superheroes in this book. It is not all what it seems. No. We do not have super-powered individuals coming, like a whole team of them coming out of this book. But there are superheroes in some form or fashion. If you read the book, you'll find out. I don't want to give it all away to you. Um, but it, it is really a really interesting read. I was hoping for like full-time superheroes, but there are no full-time superheroes after this issue. And you know what? Our group of travelers in this book, in this book, they're heroes in their own right. They're going through America. They're trying to get out of there. They're discovering what is going on in here and why things are locked down. It's a really interesting read, though. Um, yeah, if you've been on Undiscovered Country for a while, go ahead and pick that one up. There's no reason to drop it after that. Just shoot. All right, we got Homesick Pilots number seven. This is part of the second arc. This is part two of the second arc. Part one finished with issue five. Arc two started with issue six. And what we discover in this issue is that two characters that we thought were dead are actually alive. And they're basically on the run, on the lam, surviving, riding trains across the country. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good story. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, also, we find out this girl here on the cover, Amy, she's really starting to connect with these ghosts that let her control like these mechs that are built that are ghost powered. So it's a really interesting read. I'm really interested to see where it goes. Hopefully it doesn't fall flat on his face because it is different and I like it. And the art inside, I like that cut the colors, the art. It is really a fun book to read. Hopefully it continues down a steady path. Next up from the Indies, we have a lot of Indies guys. We got Layla Star, number four, Ron V, Felipe Andrade, or Andrade. But yeah, that's an, another good book. I probably should have got the foil cover. I just couldn't bring myself to pay an extra dollar for some foil. I don't know. But this is a cool cover in its own right. But uh, The Many Depths of Layla Star is a really good book, guys. I've been singing its praises for a while. I enjoy it a lot. Um, I don't know how it's going to end, but this one was very like heartfelt and touching. Touched on some some different um, kind of philosophical and religious notes. Put it there, but I've enjoyed this book. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed Philippe Andrade. We're gonna we're gonna drop the E's at the end for this pronunciation. Um, I've enjoyed his art on this one, and Ram V is an excellent writer really good really fun book it's about death getting fired and then her trying to confront the guy who's the reason why she gets fired 
the human who creates or basically ends death so he creates a way for death to cease to be a thing and you can kind of see how the wheels are, are turning or in motion after this issue perhaps it could be just you know a red MacGuffin or something like that a red herring for us to follow all right next up we've got Philadelphia number 15 nominated for best new series in the 2021 Eisner Awards I've enjoyed this book a lot and it's entered like a whole new level you have a character in this book going and talking to people who are considered enlightened and people who are um, and like gods basically and I, I didn't see that coming but it's been it's been brewing for a while so it's it's there it's in it's in the book um, yeah it's just a really interesting read though it's about vampires and ex-presidents coming back to life for vampires and how they want to make America this great thing again <laughs> so it is it is interesting definitely a fun book to read if you're not reading Philadelphia, at least give the first volume a shot volume one it's in trade Rodney Barnes wrote it he's wrote a lot of different things he's uh, he's wrote a lot of different TV shows and scripts and all this other stuff very well written all right, last up, we got a new book this week, Dark Blood, number one. This is the uh, one in ten. I paid a few extra dollars for it. It wasn't seven dollars, it was like six dollars. But this is the one in ten. One in ten is just black and white. Otherwise, this, co this cover would have been in color for the regular one. Uh, interesting book. It's about a pilot who fought in World War II, get shot down. Um, and that's in the past and now we're also in the present in this book and he's in Alabama and he's dealing with people who just don't seem to want him around and somewhere in between you know him getting shut down and where he is now it looks like he's acquired some kind of superpowers and basically this is a setup setup issue not a ton going on on there in here you just see who the character is what possibly happened to him you don't even see the whole thing. You basically just see him get shot down. Um, and, you know, you see him in the present and you see uh, him dealing with some, what looks like racism. Um, it looks like it could be a good book. This was a little slow for a first issue, but it's introduction again. A lot of these books this week were just introducing us to new characters, new scenarios, new worlds, just world building, which is something you have to do eventually in comics. So that was that. With that all being said, wasn't for me wasn't the strongest week in comics but it was a good week in comics but my read of the week will be the many deaths of Layla Star number four so that'll be my read of the week you know this book is worth a pick go ahead and pick that up and uh, I really did like Philadelphia this week so comic fam comic fans thank you for joining me don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like the content Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you want to talk about the books I picked up this week. And uh, do what you do, because I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to finish reading the books I didn't read yet. Peace!